Toussaint, the land of love and wine. Exactly how I remembered it. Hello, it's Tom from Digital Foundry. It's fair to say The Witcher 3 turned up in great style last year, but many felt its original vision had changed massively by release. Compared to this E3 2014 demo, where Geralt took us on a tour through Novigrad, a vibrant colourful city brimming with life, the final game fell short. In the final retail release, the lighting became flatter, duller, missing the saturation we had before. Assets were changed as well for the worse, and we got lower resolution floor textures, brickwork, and draw distances were ranging across the city as well. Even at maximum settings on PC, we just didn't get close to that original promise for Novigrad. But with the upcoming arrival of The Witcher 3's Blood and Wine DLC, CD Projekt Red might have finally just delivered. It's a brand new region of the map called Toussaint, a kingdom inspired by southern rural France, with a high castle at centre. No doubt this is one of the best looking, most detailed rich areas we've seen of the game, and running maxed out on PC here, the sheer variety of assets, both in textures and objects, is staggering. Now this is where things start to get interesting. In a recent interview with Eurogamer, senior environment artist Len de Grazia explains this DLC uses a brand new approach to rendering The Witcher 3's environments. The team started off from scratch in building all details in the city, which they claim meant they could optimise for performance using a new system, while also achieving a visual boost over the base game. He says, and I quote, Before, each and every prop had its own texture. This might require another draw call or so. It impacts performance, but this time around we know we're going to group things together, so you have them representing the same texture now. So we're loading less but maximising the quality at the same time. But in visual terms, does this actually deliver on the promise of earlier E3 demos of the game? Well, the real test of course will be on console, where PS4 and Xbox One struggled at launch to hit a solid 30fps. It's clear those versions will be a challenge, as they struggled with drawing in new assets especially around the complex Novigrad marketplace, where objects, textures and even characters popped in suddenly ahead. It's apparent this was a draw call issue, which created a momentary stutter in each console, but CD Projekt Red's new approach here could minimise this, a streamlining that means its engine achieves better visuals with fewer frame rate issues. In terms of the best case on PC, Toussaint's Castle Town is a rosy, gorgeous looking area. Of course, it runs on a very different theme to the harbour bustle of Novigrad, but that high density of detail, the vibrant colour palette and broad draw distances are all there. And in its own way, it revives the high points of that E3 2014 showing. The real litmus test will be in how PS4 and Xbox One take to its more flourishing designs though. For example, will the crisp high resolution murals that line Toussaint's walls make the cut? And what about the level of detail of the town itself when we pan across it from this distance? All this will be revealed soon, we'll be looking at PS4 and Xbox One versions nearer this Blood and Wine DLC's launch. On PC though, the prospects look good for the final update to The Witcher 3's world, the most picturesque area you'll see in the game and a grand final bow before it moves on to its new Cyberpunk 2077 project. If you enjoyed this quick look at The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine, do give us a like and subscribe below for now, and until next time, see you soon.